morning, everyone, or morning-ish, I guess, at this point. Uh, my name's Taylor Beatles. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the uh, first chapter of the Curriculum Studies Reader, Scientific Method in Curriculum Making, uh, which was written by Franklin Bobbitt. Uh, I think it's important to point out that he wrote this. Uh, I assume he, he mentions post-war several times, and I assume he's referring to World War I, uh, just for reference. Um, to me, the purpose of this chapter was to explain why education must advance with the rate that civilization is advancing, and then he outlines his plan to get education and curriculum there. Um, the biggest, I guess, summary of his argument would be that uh, he argues that Modern education's responsibility is to develop a type of wisdom that can grow only out of participation in living experiences and never out of mere memorization. You know, so basically, yeah, in modern education, you need to experience what you're learning and not just kind of memorize, which is something I think most people can agree with and get behind. Um, he also says that education is there to prepare for life, um, which, like I said, Bob, it thinks is the goal for modern education um, and it's one that prepares the student for specific activities when their education is complete um, and in order to create this you know ideal modern curriculum um, in order to catch education up to society um, Baba thinks that we need to find where society is deficient and then design curriculum to fix that um, he gives some examples on, you know, how this could be done. Uh, two of those examples are uh, farming and bricklaying. Uh, and he puts forth the idea that only the best and the most efficient farmers and bricklayers should be studied um, in order to train future farmers and bricklayers and that uh, education should follow this model. You know, so basically we should look to the, the most successful the upper levels of society in order to find curriculum uh, to prepare students to uh, be in that level, you know, once they are through with the education. Um, you know, obviously, when I first read this and first read that section, you know, I jotted down, you know, aiming at exceptional is sounds good. You know, why would why would anyone not aim at exceptional? Uh, in your education, uh, and especially, you know, while you're teaching your students, why wouldn't you want, you know, them to be exceptional? Um, and as you read through the chapter, or as I read through the chapter, the thing that started coming to my mind, and partly because Bobbitt asks it himself, is what is exceptional? What defines exceptional? Who defines exceptional? And when you start making those questions, you know, or asking those questions, you get to the idea that that is that's where the problem comes in is exceptional means different things for different students different people uh, different outcomes uh, and you can't just look at the highest level of as his examples farmer and bricklayer to train future farmers and bricklayers because what if you know this farmer or this bricklayer no matter how much they study no matter how much training they do will never reach that level you know and so should you just not attempt to be a farmer or a bricklayer if you are never going to be the best at it, you know? Uh, so again, in theory, that sounds good. You know, why would we, if everyone's striving for the best, then we will eventually all be the best. But in practice, uh, I think we all know that that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, I, I began to think about the classes, uh, or the students in my classes uh, throughout the years, knowing that, you know, they they've been filled with students who have many different desires for uh, their post high school or post education lives. Um, and it seems narrow minded to design curriculum for, for those very diverse classes that only hone in on, well, this is what exceptional is in this particular part of life. So we're going to train all of you to be exceptional in this one area and if you're not there, I don't know, or I guess you're out of luck. You know, I don't, I don't know what Bobbitt's plan necessarily was for those who may not reach 
that level. I guess it may be they don't need to be in that education system, uh, which again is another problem. Um, so it just seems like a, a kind of narrow-minded view of the education system um, to just limit to the exceptional, to the, you know, here is the one specific aim of education and we need to be training our students to this one specific area. You know, it's like I said, when you think about the classes that you've had, just like I think about the classes that I've had and the students that are in there and the ones that you know go on to be successful, it's never one type of student and it's never in one type of area. Um, and, you know, when you when I start thinking about that in relation to what, what Bobbitt is proposing here about how to design curriculum, it's just problem after problem after problem that come up. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I do find it interesting and I do, I do think it is a way a lot of people think that, I mean, I've heard it, you know, that, well, we need to be striving to make everyone up here, you know, instead of, you know, let's make this student here and this student here, you know, just raising the level. Let's see growth out of each individual student. Um, I think is a concept that, like I said, it sounds good in theory for everyone to be here but it's just not realistic. And as educators, uh, we know that. Uh, so I won't ramble on anymore, but like I said, back going back to, to Baba and closing is, you know, his idea of the purpose of this, you know, uh, or the, I guess his purpose of this chapter and writing this article is, you know, just to make sure that education does not lag behind which again is something that i can get behind i you know he he explains that education must advance with civilization um and even possibly in front of civilization and civilization stay out in front so that we don't lag behind um you know we don't want education to seem like a or the way we do education as part of the past so again i i think he is on to something in that regard, but we just need to make sure we are doing it in a way that serves all students and helps all students achieve their potential instead of narrowing it to a certain type of student achieving a certain type of thing. Um, so um, thanks for listening to my ramblings uh, and uh, I look forward to watching and reading y'all's.